Good afternoon and uh, happy last week of February, as crazy as that is. Um, it's almost time for planting season. So the first weekend of March, so this coming up Saturday, which that will actually be in the next vlog, but it's finally going to be time to start putting all of my uh, cool season vegetables out. So I will be planting all of my lettuces, carrots, beets, peas, uh, the Brussels sprouts will go in, the onions will go in. So all of that stuff is coming up this weekend and it's going to be on next, let's see, that will be next Wednesday's vlog. So we're so close to time. Uh, the crazy thing is, as warm as it's been, today is 75 degrees and then tomorrow's going to be 78. And then we're supposed to have a front come through. Um, right now, they've kind of taken the rain out of the forecast. They just show a lot of wind. Um, that's always subject to change around here. Um, but Wednesday is only going to be 45 degrees for the high and then in the 20s overnight. So we're going to have at least one last day or one last night, I should say, where we actually get like a hard freeze overnight. So the exciting thing about this week, which will probably be at the end of this vlog because, so I'm trying to do Monday through Thursday for Sunday's vlog and then Friday through Sunday for Wednesday's vlog. So this will be the last day, but my library has their semi-annual book sale coming up this Thursday. So they do it the first week, <clears throat> or well, I should say the first weekend of the month on in March and September. And so Friday is the first, so this will be the first weekend of March, but Friends of the Library members get early access on Thursday evenings. And so I'm a friend of the library member, which basically just means I donate some money to the library every year. And then they send me library bucks that I can use to buy some books. I think I've got $5 in library book library bucks I can use um, and then also get the early access. So I usually end up coming home with around 20-ish books, sometimes more, sometimes less. It just depends on the selection. Um, but... I am very excited about that. It's one of my favorite events of the entire year. So I'm building a classics library in my basement. One of these days, I'll give you a tour of that. But right now, my oldest son uh, is in the basement. So he's on like one side and then my library is on the other. And there's like a little divider um, down the middle. And so he just, it's always a mess down there, I feel like. So I kind of just stay out of there. But he's probably not too terribly far from moving out and getting his own place now sometime over this next year. Probably by the end of this year, he'll be out on his own. So um, at some point, I'll get to give you a tour of that. But I will definitely share with you all the books that I end up with. I have a whole list of books that I own and books that I still want. And I take that with me so that I can look because I didn't used to do that back when I was kind of first started to, starting to build this. And in one of the book sales, I ended up with a couple of duplicates. So now I kind of go prepared. It's basically a spreadsheet, but it's a uh, Google Sheets um, that I take on my phone so I can look them up and make sure that I don't already have it before I pick it up. But so that's the exciting event this week. But um, I also am going to be um, cooking. Well, this one is a salad, so it's not really cooking so much as preparing a new dish with you this week too, but I'm waiting on, I, you know, I might have enough tahini left to do the dressing. I'll have to check and see, but I did order more because my local store was out. So, and it will be here tomorrow sometime. So it might be Wednesday before I can make this with you. So I will have that coming up too. Not sure what else we'll get up to, but anyway, welcome to a brand new week. Oh yes, and one more thing before I go, because I totally just glossed past this, but you saw me do my yoga already. Normally I do it like first thing in the morning. It's good and early and I don't know, I'm just not in the mood for vlogging it. So I don't usually, plus I normally do it in my office and there's not a whole lot of space in there to like set up the camera where you can get a good view of what the heck I'm doing anyway. Um, but it is warm enough now, at least most days that I can do it outside. And so I decided, obviously, early in the morning, it's still too chilly outside to do it. But if I do it on my lunch break, the weather's perfect right now. And this is pre mosquito season because I tried doing it outside last year, but I didn't try until the fall. And the mosquitoes are so bad by then that you just can't. So um, anyway, until the mosquitoes come, I think I might make this a habit because I had been up and moving around enough that my legs were good and warm. And I felt like it was a lot easier than it is first thing in the morning when I'm fresh out of bed. So um, anyway, you might see a little bit more yoga in the <clears throat> upcoming videos, at least until mosquitoes arrive, which usually is about June and kind of drive me back in the house. So anyway, now I'm done. Talk to you soon.
so strange that only these two seeds sprouted and none of the rest of the tubes I've got seven tubes that did absolutely nothing and it, the days of germination is 8 to 12 and today is day 12 and I've seen no activity so I just went ahead and sowed the rest of what I had which was only four seeds so I guess if I still see nothing by this weekend whenever I go to buy uh, my soil and uh, the rest of the greens the lettuce seeds and stuff that I need to start planting outside then I'll pick up another packet of nasturtium and try again but so crazy because it was a brand new packet of seeds that I just bought this year, so I don't know why they aren't coming up. But anyway, stay tuned. We'll see how this turns out. It was a shockingly warm day today, so kale salad just sounded good. It actually hit, if not 80, very, very close. It was supposed to be 78 for the high. I never looked to see what it actually got to, but um, tomorrow it's going to be freezing cold. So today I'm throwing together a kale salad. Tomorrow I have plans to make a vegan jambalaya, so I will film that too. Um, and I'll probably go a little bit more in depth with that than I did with this, but I'm just kind of throwing a bunch of stuff together in a salad and I want to get as much of the food groups as I can. So I have obviously my greens and then chickpeas for a protein. And then the quinoa is in the fridge cooling. So I have that for a grain. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up some sliced beets to put on there. And I'm going to whip up a tahini dressing. Um, oh yeah. And I did kind of, um, fake roast some sweet potatoes earlier. And what I mean by that is I basically just stuck it in the microwave for a couple of minutes to soften it and then peeled it, cut it up and stuck it in the air fryer to crisp it up a little. So kind of just a cheat way to do a roast because roasting potatoes takes like 40 minutes. Um, but I only had one sweet potato. So I kind of have that set beside it. I'm just going to sprinkle it in my one serving rather than putting in this whole thing. So I'm contemplating maybe even, because I have some mandarin oranges, and I might peel one of those and drop a little bit of that in here because then it'll have a fruit too. But I think apples would be equally good. I've just used them all up because I made like an apple turnover last week with some leftover pie crust that needed to be used. So anyway, I'm going to drain these beets and get them on there, check on the quinoa and see if it's cooled enough to put on, and then get the dressing made. there she is. All of my veggies and my fruits and my grains and my proteins all in one dish. Ready to eat.
good Wednesday morning and welcome back to February. <laughs> We're actually having a kind of normal temperature day. Um, the high is only going to be 45 today after being almost 80 yesterday. Um, but the wind that tore through with that front, like it was windy all day yesterday. And I know the tent stakes came loose and I had to go resecure them a couple times or well, one time, um, but overnight last night, a front came through and the wind picked up even more. And so of course this morning I woke up to find my tomato cover blown off completely and in the yard. So it has two brand new rips in it now, which who knows how in the world that even happened because there was nothing there for it to snag on. The only thing I can guess is maybe it caught the corner of like the concrete box when it was blowing over. So I'm gonna have two new rips that are gonna need sewn up, but I am not doing that today because it is way too cold. Um, I will probably wait until next week when it's back into like the 60s and even a couple of 70s again and fix it then. But I do have it resecured and I tried to tamp down the soil where the tent stakes go in the best that I can. I mean, it's just new, fresh, loose soil and, you know, it hasn't been compacted with water and plant roots and all of that yet. So it just isn't holding very well with those tent stakes. And I did manage to lose a tent stake. I looked around and I couldn't find it anywhere. And I'm really hoping that it's not like in the grass under some leaves where I'm going to find it with my lawnmower. Um, but anyway, at least I had a couple of extra, so, um, got that put back in place. I did have to bring some of the plants in because it's going to get down to 27 degrees tonight. So just went ahead and brought them in. I'll leave them in here for today and put them back out tomorrow. Um, but I will have to go and cover plants again tonight after I just finished washing all the blankets from the freeze we had a couple weeks ago. Um, so anyway, that's the adventure for this morning. And so on my lunch break today, since it is definitely going to be too cold to be doing any yoga or any reading or anything outside, I'm going to go ahead and make my vegan jambalaya. So I will share that with you. So it's going to be a two cooking segment uh, video this week. Um, but after that, uh, tomorrow is the book sale, which is the thing that I am excited about this week. And I will film as much as I can of that. I mean, it's definitely a public event and there's going to be a lot of people and I don't like to get other people in my videos without their permission as much as possible. Um, so I don't know how much I'll actually get to film in the sale, but I will most definitely share with you what I found after the sale. So anyway, I'm going to get into work now and I will see you at lunch. All right, I'm ready to make my vegan jambalaya. I am going to go ahead and throw the rice in the Instant Pot first so I can get that cooking because once it comes to pressure, it takes 22 minutes to cook. And then I'll come back and get all my vegetables chopped and then we'll get everything thrown in the pot. done just in time to have to clock back into work um, but I did make a couple of modifications that I'll probably go ahead and put um, just kind of like a caption on the screen at the point that I do it 
but I thought I'd go ahead and hop on and explain to you. So I added some greens that weren't originally in the recipe. Um, I have kale. I probably would have preferred like collard, collard greens or turnip greens or something in it. Um, and then I also added, I just, I didn't think the flavor was enough. So I added some Old Bay seasoning and some Creole seasoning to it in addition to everything else. Um, I think that was the only modification. Oh, and I added some bay leaves. So um, I will put the recipe in the description box down below for you. So if you want to try it, you can. But those are the modifications that I made. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to go back to my desk and clock in for work and eat my lunch. Another quick note to add that I did also cook the rice separately in a pressure cooker rather than cooking it in with the dish because I use whole grain brown rice and I feel like unless you pressure cook it, it just never gets done enough. So because of that, I decreased the amount of liquid. I basically just poured in vegetable broth until it was just almost covering everything so that it would be able to cook down and be kind of thick rather than be like a soup. So um, it's a little bit liquidy, but not too much. So um, anyway, my other modification. Now I'm gonna enjoy. I am on my way to the library book sale. I will get there just about 30 minutes early um, because there's always a line. So I want to get there early and get as close to the front of it as I can possibly be. Um, I think I'm pretty lucky in that I'm one of the very, very few, like there might be one or two other people ever that I see going after like the classic books, thankfully. So I don't have to worry too much, but um, anyway, I am going to get there decent anyhow, and I brought a book with me to read while I wait. Um, and then I have a giant Panera catering bag to hold my books because the other bags that I used to always take just were never quite big enough. And I don't even remember, it's probably some work event that Michael picked up Panera for, um, had the bag left and gave it to me. So anyway, I have that, I have my cash, I have my library books, and I am ready to go. So I am going to swing by Michael's house after I leave there. Um, and so I don't know if I'll do it there or wait until I get home, but I will be back to uh, show you everything that I get. So this year's book sale, or well, the first of this year's book sales, honestly, not so great this time. This is probably the worst I've done at a book sale. Um, I spent $14.50 and I normally spend somewhere between about 19 and 25. So I definitely didn't get as many books. When I got over to Michael's house to show him what I got, he was like, that's it? <laughs> so uh, that tells you anything. Um, but I did get to knock off a couple of books that were on my um, list of books that I wanted. Plus, I got a few other classics that weren't on the list. Um, well, really, they were classic authors anyway. And then I got a few other books. So let me just show you what I got. <clears throat> we will start with the non-classics. So Jodi Ficoult is one of those authors that I will buy anything that she writes. Um, there aren't a ton of authors that I do this with, but she is definitely one of them. And they actually had quite a few Jodi Picot novels this time. So I grabbed a few of hers. So this one is Perfect Match, which I've never read. So we'll get around to it. Um, and then The Tenth Circle, <coughs> which none of these I've actually ever read that I got of hers. Handle with Care. 
And then two more, I believe. So this one is Lone Wolf, and then this one is Sing You Home. So five Jody Picole novels. And that is just about half of the books that I got. All right, this is the book I've been reading. I'm going to set that one aside. I took it along because I needed something to pass time while I was sitting there waiting on them to open up. Um, so let's see. I think I had one more that was not a classic. Well, it is kind of a classic. It's just it's still, I think this one was written in like 2003 or 2007. So only around 20 years old. So not really considered a classic yet, but definitely will be. Uh, the Kite Runner. If you want a like six star book, <laughs> this one is it for sure. Um, it is not my favorite book by Khaled Hasseni, believe it or not. Um, this was the first one he wrote, but the second one he wrote, A Thousand Splendid Sons, is my favorite. And honestly, that one I probably need to just relocate to my dresser. I have bookends on my dresser and my favorite books are on there. And maybe I'll just go show you that here in a minute whenever we're done. Um, but I had my top five favorite books on it. I've recently added a sixth and honestly, I need to just go get a thousand splendid sons and put it on there and make it my top seven. Um, but anyway, so sister book to that one. And then the rest of these are classics. I did get a couple of DVDs though, which is something I've never actually bought there before. So, and I don't know how much these were a piece. Um, honestly, I believe I had spent $9 and my total was $14.50, so it was $5.50 for three DVDs, so I'm not really sure how they figured that, but anyway, Little House on the Prairie season one, they only had season one, but I was like, okay, how fitting is this? I'm reading the Little House series, so when I'm done, I can watch some of those, and then I found The Shining, which is a classic, of course, and The Dick Van Dyke Show. It's just six random episodes, but this will forever be one of my favorite shows. Um, so I definitely had to get it in case there's ever a time where I can't access because I have a Roku. I also have a Samsung TV, but I have a Roku as well plugged into it. And I want to say that it is on the Roku channel that you can get um, the Dick Van Dyke show for free. So, whoops. Get back in there. Okay. Anyway, on to the classics now. So I'm going to start with Gone with the Wind, which is one that was not on my list of books to get. I feel like the movie is more of the classic, more so than the book. But when they had it, I grabbed it. This is the first time I've seen it there. And then Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. Um, so first and foremost, Audrey Hepburn is my second favorite actress of all time, topped for me only by the one and only Judy Garland. So I love the movie, but Truman Capote is also one of those authors that is just a classic and you can't go wrong with getting his stuff. So they had this one. It's been on my list for a long time. I finally found it. A Tale of Two Cities. Now I had my spreadsheet with me that is um, all of the books that are inventoried in my home library and I did not see this one on it. However, when I was at Michael's house and I was looking to see which ones of these were on my classics list, I had it on there and I had it highlighted, which means that I already own it. So now I'm like, do I own it? And I just managed to miss it when I was inventorying because that's the whole reason I have this spreadsheet because I've gotten up to enough books now that there's no way I can remember what I have and what I don't. And I don't want to end up with duplicates because I've done that a couple of times. So I might have just ended up with another duplicate. And then... The other one that I had on my list that I've been looking for for a while and had not come across is Rebecca. And this one, the movie, I believe, came out in 1940, maybe 1941. One of my favorite classic movies, um, but I've never read the book. So I am super excited to have this now. And then um, Of Human Bondage by Somerset Mom. I did not have this on my list, but it's another one of those classics that you can't really pass it up when you find it. And last but not least, another John Steinbeck novel. I've never heard of this one. It's Tortilla Flat, um, but it's very small, kind of like The Pearl, so it shouldn't take long to read. <clears throat> and then finally, I said last but not least, this one is a little bit different. 
um, because this is the complete short stories of Edgar Allan Poe. So it's not just one book, it's a compilation of stories. So it's kind of in its own category, but also still a classic. And that's it. That's all I got. I've never, sorry, if you're kind of bouncing around, if you see it wobbling, it's because Emily's walking right behind the camera, you little turd. Um, anyway, this is definitely the smallest haul I have ever made. And if you take the three movies out, which is something I've never bought before, I mean, the number of books I got is kind of sad, honestly. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that when the book sale in August rolls around, which is also odd because normally it's the first weekend of March and the first weekend of September, but this coming up one is going to be the last weekend of August instead. So anyway, I am hoping that I will make out better at that one, but I'm going to go and show you the books I have in my room. All right. And here are the books in my room. Let me move some of the stuff out of the way so you can see it. Okay. So we will start with my favorite book of all time. Jane Eyre by the infamous Charlotte Bronte. All right, I'll leave them alone so they don't topple over anymore. But the rest of them are kind of just in no particular order. So we have The Awakening by Kate Chopin, Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt, The Storyteller by Jodi Picoult, which is in here because it was the very first Jodi Picoult that I ever read and I really liked it. And it was also the first um, historical fiction novel that I ever read. And I have read other since that I would put better than this one. Honestly, anything by Kristen Hanna would probably top this one. Her historical fiction are phenomenal. Um, but this was my introduction to that. So that kind of earned it a spot in here. The same with this one, South of Broad by Pat Conroy. I had not previously even put this like in my top five. It would have been, been in my top 10 for sure. But it was the introductory novel to Pat Conroy. And since then, I have purchased just about every book that he's ever written and read most of them. Um, my friend Elisa had a signed copy of that book and she lent it to me and I fell in love with Pat Conroy. And then I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou is probably, or Maya Angelou, I guess to each his own because I've heard it pronounced both ways many times. Um, anyway, this would probably be in my number two spot in all honesty. And then The Color Purple by Alice Walker. And recently I have added A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. And so I really need to go and get A Thousand Splendid Sons and add it to this list. Um, and then I have a Journey Songs book, which is kind of a holdover from my days in the choir, which it's been a few years now since I was in the choir. And honestly, I've not even been to church since I don't know when. Um, I've definitely lapsed from all of that, but um, I really enjoyed singing in the choir. It made the church experience very, very different from just sitting in the pews and listening down below. Um, and then this is my journal. And then this book is one... I mean, I've been a bookworm my entire life and my grandma used to gift me books, but I was going through some stuff in a container in the basement and came across this one and I had to get it out and put it in its rightful place up here with all of the others. My grandma passed away last July and definitely miss her. She was my best friend. So with that, I am going to close out this vlog. And I will see you guys again on Wednesday.